Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to a very interesting case. What we have in this ear, I'll just do a quick bit of orientation. That is where the eardrum roughly is or will be when I, I clean it out a little bit more. Pink skin, ear canal, lovely. And this debris is basically a, a long-term collection of dead skin. Now what you're going to see in this video is two problems. Firstly, the initial problem which we uncover is not good, but arguably not necessarily in urgent need of attention. I'm not picking up the phone to the ENT consultant. And what it is, is it's a widening of the external auditory canal. And it's a nice smooth widening, it's lined with epithelium. I can't see any inflammation, granulation tissue, etc., etc., or exposed bone. So it's not a particularly panicky problem, clinically speaking. But then, once I take a closer look, we are going to see another pathology which is very worrying and I think will be quite difficult to treat surgically, but we'll, we'll have a look. So what is all of this stuff? So this kind of very tough, rubbery, kind of elasticy, embedded debris is dead skin. And it's been sitting there for quite some time. So the case history is this gent has been trying to get this ear cleared for about two years. And he's gone to his local GP surgery, he's gone to a few different audiologists for microsuction, but no one's been able to get it 100% clear. And he's always felt like something is wrong. You know, obviously his hearing isn't that good in this ear, but he's always felt as though there's like this kind of weird fullness in his ear but there's no pain or anything, which is good. So what we're gonna to have to do is, this case was handled by myself and Lils. And what we did was, it took a long time. I mean, a long, long time. And we had to do it in three stages. So in this first instance, we're really just kind of, at this point, we're just disturbing the debris and roughing it up and just trying to make any sort of progress here. So then we drowned this ear in sodium bicarb drops, stuck some cotton wool in and told the patient to wait in the waiting area for half an hour as it kind of seeped in. We got him back half an hour later, made some more progress and then instilled further bicarb. And then most of what you'll see is that third attempt. So it was all done in one day, but um, you know, by the third attempt, it was just about loose enough that we could then just pull it all out, sort of like a tooth really, it all came out in one go, sort of. So I would put it to you that right at the start, this, this whole case is very suspicious right off the bat. Even if when the ear canal isn't very clear, it looks off. There, there are two reasons for that. And uh, this is the part where I pull out all of this debris and you'll see that you know, it's very much like an iceberg. As we leverage it out, you'll see how deep it goes. So it was very suspicious because when we first entered the ear canal, it looked as though the debris was sitting down, like lower, like there was a lip and the ear canal went down. And this is why. And you see how, you know, big that chunk of debris is? The white stuff is just freshly shed dead skin. More soggy dead skin here, which is not good. But you know, the, the, this debris is formed very much like an onion. It's just layers and layers of dead skin collecting and collecting. And now we can see the true extent of the problem. We have this hollowing out of the ear canal. And, and you could kind of see, now you know what you're looking for. When you rewind the video and look back to when we first went in with the endoscope, you can see very clearly that lip and then how the debris was sitting in very much a depression. And that was what was suspicious. What was also suspicious was that lots of clinicians had tried and failed to remove the debris, which, you know, you do hear of it sometimes where, you know, a person goes to uh, someone to get suction and they, they can't remove it. And that's quite normal. It does happen. But it's unusual for, you know, so many clinicians or, or services to fail over and over again to remove the debris. That's a sign that something's not right. It's not normal earwax. So we're just removing a little bit of this debris deeper in the canal, but we are going to have a look at this hollowing out. Now, it's, uh, and it, you can see it's, it's lined with this kind of white silvery stuff. That's just freshly shed, freshly shed dead skin, but it is lined underneath with, with living tissue, living epithelium. And that's, the fact that it's kind of nice and smooth 
made me less worried because it's the kind of widening that you would see with keratosis obturans, for example, although the patient wasn't in pain, but it looks like it's been caused by bone resorption, not erosion. So there's no granulation tissue, there's no pus, there's no exposed bone or ulceration of the skin. So I think what's happened is that because that debris has been there so long and you know it's been collecting and, and you know the body's been adding to it, and also whenever he's put in drops, you know, it's likely that this big plug has, you know, taken that lovely bicarb or otex or whatever or and water when he's been showering and has expanded. That puts pressure on bone. And when you have long-term sustained pressure on bone, you know, the bone changes, your body changes it. So on a micro level, and I'm not an expert in bones, but I would assume that the osteoblasts, which are cells that make bone, um, they've detected that there's stress, there's calcium phosphate in the area. And then when that happens, osteoblasts will release a chemical called RANK or RANK L. And that will encourage the formation of osteoclasts, which break down bone. And uh, then you, you get this very organized, lovely, smooth bone resorption. So the bone is being, you know, the, you get the release of all those minerals back into the blood. And that's normal, by the way. You know, your body is constantly remodeling your skeleton all the time, depending on the stresses that it's under. But this is abnormal bone resorption. This should never have happened. Probably avoidable um, if it had been, you know, had a good clear out uh, two years ago. But nonetheless, it was, you know, it's happened. But it's not, it's not worrying. However, what bothered me at this stage of the procedure was that I couldn't see, like, round the bend and I couldn't see down. And you can clearly see there's still, you know, white, sluffy, dead skin here, which needs to be removed. But I couldn't quite get the endoscope round that corner. Um, and that, that little kind of red bump that you can see on the right hand side, that's just where I've been a bit rough. Um, but I can't see down and I can't see posteriorly. And this kind of shaking of the camera here, I'm just kind of you know, shaking it around, that's me trying to get the endoscope in and like tilt it down and tilt it back. But I just can't do it um, because it's a rigid endoscope. So what we're going to do is have a look with a 70 degree scope. What is that? So you're seeing this is now footage through a 70 degree scope. I'll explain what that is. So a, a zero degree endoscope and they all, I'll pause it here, they all look the same. An endoscope like a, a short rigid endoscope, like most ear endoscopes are, it's just a rod. And a zero degree endoscope looks forwards, okay? As you'd expect. But a th like an angled endoscope, like a 30 degree or 70 degree looks up. Okay, so the end is like cut, it's like beveled. And a 70 degree endoscope, as you shove the rod in, it will actually give you an image which is 70 degrees looking upwards. But what I've done is I'm basically holding it upside down so that now, were, as I shove the rod in, we're looking down at 70 degrees. And what you're seeing there is the floor of the ear canal as I'm slowly moving the endoscope in. Okay, so be mindful of that. So floor of the ear canal, floor of the ear canal, and that little red bump there, that is what that is. Okay, it's just where you're, you're seeing it now looking down. Okay, so that's roughly where we are. That's kind of the lip. So that is that. And as we move past that lip, now we can see right down and yes, you can see debris in there. So this is a canal cholesteatoma. This is a very, very deep trench, which we obviously we, we've been unable to clear. It looks rather deep to me. It, you know, the image quality isn't great. Absolutely useless attempt to suction here. There's no way that's gonna happen. I do have like a kind of hooked, like right angle kind of suction tube, but it's very dangerous to use, very difficult to use. So again, I can't really get a good shot here, but it, it does go quite deep. And uh, again, you can clearly see that there's wet, dead skin. So yeah, see right there, I think that's quite a good shot actually, where, it, where you know, to show you how deep it goes. I can't really tell if that's sequestra in there, but either way, that's, not particularly good. Um, I rather suspect that that will be difficult to treat surgically, 
that's the before shot and hopefully you can see now now that it's cleared all out you can kind of see how how low riding that debris was and why it looks suspicious so how is this going to be fixed um i don't know i mean normally when you see little bits of erosion and you know smaller canal cholesteatomas the treatment would be a meatoplasty or a canal plasty same thing external auditory canal meatoplasty which apparently is a you know, fairly routine, fairly easy operation for an experienced ENT doctor. I think what they do is they simply cut around the canal with a circular knife. They push back the skin like you would see on a moringoplasty. So they make this kind of flap and then they drill the bone out nice and smooth so that there is no depression or crater. And then they just lay the skin back down or maybe with some graft material and jobs are good in. How they are going to fix this, I have absolutely no idea. Are they going to just like obliterate that widening in the trench? Are they going to fill it with something? Are they going to fill it with fat? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. Are they just going to kind of drill that lip down? Um, it seems like it's going to be very complicated and it would be great to get some surgical analysis from Vic Veer on this. I know it's going to be difficult without seeing a CT scan, but Vic, how in the world would you fix this? What's the prognosis? Um, so that'd be, be very, very interesting to see a reaction video to this. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you found this interesting. Of course, if I see an update, I will let you know. I, I suspect he'll probably be back at some point. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And of course, head over to Vic Veer's channel, Vic Veer ENT. I'll link it down in the description box below. Go watch his videos. He's got some great videos on tonsillectomy and uh, mid ear surgery as well. And uh, we'll see if he responds. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.